Greetings, geeks. Welcome to episode 575 of Geeks in Space. I'm still Rob Commander Taco Malda, and I'm still in pretend low Earth orbit with two of my greatest geek pals, Chris DeBona. Hi. Rob Roseboom. I'm still Rob. We are the Robs. I, I'm always happy that the Robs outnumber the Chris's. Yeah, that's, the, that's, that's pretty much always going to be true with our friend group, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. Let's see what we got going Although, on. You being a bully, it's not a good look for you, Rob. Which Rob? I'm just saying. Well, you, of course. I'm not a bully. <laughs> hmm. I was not a good kid, but I don't know that oh, I was no. a bully. I might have been. It's hard to say. Well, okay. Uh, the James Webb Telescope uh, is almost ready to go again after they got damaged and then uh, uh, repaired. Which I guess has uh, now been going for thirty years. Um, no, that's not true, is it? I mean, they 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 were always planning on launching it sometime in the last five years. I thought, right? But uh, but didn't they get the funding approved to do this? Like when I was a teenager. Well, they did get the funding approved uh, shortly after I guess Hubble launched or mm -hmm. whatever. But um, then you know it, it was a little more spendy than we expected. So it ballooned, I think, to $8.8 billion for the launcher. And and, it's that mm. and and it's it's an incredibly complex piece of work. I mean, you for know, it's, sure. two, it's two things that sit in space together. And, you know, you have like the solar, sh you have the, 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 the shade structure. Mm -hmm. And then you have the actual telescope and they, they move in concert. And yeah, it's a... And it unfolds like origami too. It's it's crazy. But it's extraordinary engineering. It is. It'll be interesting to see if it doesn't just you know turn into a crumpled ball of metal. You know. Yep. Uh, the article that's on the Taco Zone right now actually has a couple of cool pictures in it. Just if you haven't seen it, there's like them cleaning I am off, sharing that tab, baby. There you go. Uh, there, there's I just there's one if you scroll down uh, uh, of them cleaning off like one of the mirrors, and they've got a whole thing where they like create. <laughs> they got like carbon dioxide snow. Uh, yeah, to clean it's this dry ice snow to clean it. Yeah. It's crazy. There like it that. That's there's nuts. Wow. I I can't help but notice there's no cup holder yet. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't let Homer get involved. <laughs> Seems with all that money, <laughs> they could at least put in a cup holder or some sort of Bluetooth sink. But it's unmanned. Yeah, they should have had a Bluetooth speaker for it. For yeah. sure. Right. But like, um, what I love about this photo, I'm, I'm so glad you called it out. It's just like, I like. I wonder what the grit of carbon dioxide snow is. Is it like oh, a it billion, must be like a billion or something? Right. So, uh, when I sand things in my wood shop, yeah. uh, uh, I occasionally have been known to sand things uh, into the tens and sixteen thousands of grits. But wow. once you get beyond that, uh, I'm basically just using a piece of wool. Like that, like it's whatever the grit of wool is. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's a way you could find out. Uh, and I wonder what gets on the, the mirrors. Is it just the lubricant from the polishing process? Is it the cast like, of sunshine? Um, it, it's sort of like when when they paint cars, you know, with the spray booths. You know, you get like that texture, and then then you do the cutting and the polishing on the YouTube channels, right? <laughs> I wonder if they had something similar for space mirrors now. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, here's a, you, are you familiar with Fordite? Yeah, of course. Uh, sure. I always, every now and then my pen blank websites, somebody gets a hunk of Fordite and makes yeah. pens out of Fordite. Uh, and I always, uh, I always like that. I want to, someday I'm going to do that. <laughs> Here, uh, I have a picture of a Fordite. I can share it. Here you go. Here's somebody made jewelry or a pet rock out of it. There you and go. It's just like. It's so cool, you know. Uh, the real question is, like, we've been talking about Fordite on the channel for 20 years. Do we run out of Fordite? You know, do people yeah. still find it? I mean, I know we've made a lot of cars as a country, but at this point, is Fordite really Fordite? Or is it like, I don't know. I mean, I got to kind of feel like there's got to be somebody out there who's figured out a good way to make fake Fordite. Yeah, uh, right. And not vintage Fordite. <laughs> yeah. So. It just seems like there's more of it that shows up uh, on the websites for sale than uh, than uh, really need to like than, than could actually be from Ford factories, right? Yeah. Let's see, yeah. Je oh, Jeff I mean, it's not like 
Yeah, what? Oh, Jeff Bezos uh, decided to retire by becoming the chairman of the board and not the CEO. Yes, and then he's going to exit that spot in, in a couple quarters is apparently the story. So He wants to spend more time with the Washington Post. <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious because you used to work there. Is he just following you around, Rob Malda? If he wants to be on Geeks in Space, he can. That we can add a square for him. He can. I'll give him the, a center square. He can like just be right in the middle. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Smaller though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's never been on the broadcast. He's not a member of our friend group. No, we don't give him like. He's not the prodigal son returning. He's just a rich dude. No, but we Unless put him. He gives you a space on his on his spacecraft. Oh yeah, there you go. No, no, he can come, but we put him in a square that's like 25 percent the size of ours, and then muted like to like 30 percent of the volume. Guys, okay, I, guys. Hey, hey, hey. You know, I mean, he's all right. <laughs> You know, but you know, I don't actually know a lot about the guy, but he does seem to he's be a legit. Cha- he's not even on the Discord. That's channel, right. Right. I'd rather have Ambalu May- or, yeah. or maybe any of these other people. Well, know? I mean, he and Elon probably don't get along. <laughs> you know, they. I'm sure they do. The thing about those billionaires, they're all like chummy and they're right. Like, touch, so. Once you get to the club, you stop caring about the details. Well, the other side of it is they're always invested in each other's things. Yeah, like. Bezos was an early investor in Google. Google was an early investor in Tesla and SpaceX and actually funded much of the Starlink program. So there's like a lot of like intra-billionaire money. For sure. You know? For stuff. sure. Uh, but uh, my, my only thing about him is that there's a couple of things that I really like about him. But uh, the main thing is he does seem to be a legit for realsies Trekkie. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, no, n- like time. And anybody who's a legit, like, not one of the fake Trekkies, you know, you're you're the real deal. All right, man. That's all right. Yeah. He, so that's that's my message to Jeff. If he wants to come on and talk about Star Trek, he can talk about, like, maybe the season premiere of the next season of Discovery or something. <laughs> or Picard. <laughs> Picard. <laughs> oh, God. Well, no, you know, you know, Amazon, I think they refuse to be among the people backing Picard and Discovery. So it's yeah. pretty clear that Jeff didn't like it that much. Mm-hmm. But they're they're there for the expanse, baby. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I've still never seen it, uh, but I've I've kind of got on my mind that now that I've I've just decided Kathleen's never going to watch it with me, so I'm going to just sit down and and steamroll it in the next few weeks. Uh, you should. Well, I mean, it, it's it has one more season, you yeah, know, which is a good logical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Valentine's Day is Run coming up. That, you know, Valentine's Day is coming yeah. up. Uh, and oh, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, if uh, you ever wanted to uh, name a cockroach after your ex and then watch animals eat it, that's now a service that's being provided by the internet. I don't think that's a super romantic idea. It. I don't think it's romance. No. I think it's like anti-romance. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, it's after your ex, not your current spouse. Right. 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 Okay. That that makes yeah. more sense. It does. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of relationship? I mean, this? there's been all sorts of zoo promotions for Valentine's Day, but usually they're about weird animal sex or something. <laughs> Where you go, they pump you full of drinks and they talk about, you know, pigs having corkscrew penises or something. Right. But this one, you know, this one you can work some bitter out by... Right. Naming a Madagascar cockroach after your ex-girlfriend and watching a lizard eat it or something. I really dislike cockroaches. They're so grody, dude. <sighs> They're not really that much of a big deal in Michigan. Are they? Yeah. I mean, it gets cold here, right? So they don't... I mean, they're, they, yeah, they're around. Yeah, we don't get them here either, but like when I would go to Florida as a kid, it was just like that smell of raid, that weird cloying smell i wouldn't know uh let's see oh san diego man reunited with his wallet i didn't read that rob (laughs) i didn't read it what's the deal here he's just uh he he was a navy guy he went down there and did weather research for like a year went home totally lost his wallet somewhere and they're demolishing those buildings now and uh behind i guess a file cabinet they found this guy's wallet so they sent it back to him 53 years after he left. I had like a wiener schnitzel, like frequent eater card, you know, with like five punches taken out of it. And, Was this actually at the South Pole Station or at Mercuto or where? Uh, I, I don't remember. Do. Let's take a look. We can read the article. Dun, I'm, dun, dun, I'm dun, trying dun. to RTFA. Wow. McMurdo. 
Yeah. All right. it, was, it was just in a building. Less and impressive. They dropped it. Less yeah, it impressive. It was like in a, in a locker. They were tearing it down. You know. Well, so it's worth pointing out that Subway was founded in 1965, so he probably had a Subway card. Oh, yeah. You know. D- is there inflation for the punches? Uh, you know, no, on Subway, probably not. Mm. Um, no. But I, I would imagine they would they would expand through time and space because, mm. you know, they change the price of the, you know. You know. Yeah, I'm I don't think sure they're keeping track of the punches. From, I'm not sure that there's any cash value to a mm. punch card. Yeah, I can't imagine the finance department having to maintain it like United Points. You know, oof, that's right. We're gonna have to. They're gonna occasionally have to have a, a subway points doubling in order to keep up with uh, inflation. You know, back then they didn't have the foot long. Uh, they yeah. only had the seven incher uh, because yeah. Americans didn't eat as much back then. Yeah, imagine well. if if they did. I mean, that guy's probably. He's probably got a quarter mile of Subway sandwich coming to him now, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was, uh, let me see. I'm entitled to uh, 38 yards of Subway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I have 400 yards of Subway coming to me. I, I wish to measure my, my Subway sandwich in terms of world record holding rushes uh, from NFL football games. Oh, the, there's a game this weekend, right? Uh. I don't know, but I have an important uh, note about sandwich inflation. Okay. So uh, if 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 there's a dollar per inch, let's just say, so we can do the conversion easily. So the value of $12 from 1965 to today, it would make it a 99-inch sandwich, 99.23-inch sandwich. So divide that by 12, you get an 8.2, eight and a quarter foot sandwich is, is the inflation, sandwich right. inflation. That seems reasonable. That seems reasonable, yeah, and, yeah. and right. I think that I think that that man deserves an eight foot sub, right? And if you think about it, that's the perfect size for 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 a Super Bowl for a Super example. Bowl party, right? That you shouldn't have because it's a super spreader Super Bowl party. I haven't had a Super Bowl party in like ten years. I think Rob, the last time I might have like gone to somebody's house for a Super Bowl party might have been the, when I went to your house and we saw Janet Jackson's booby. Mm, I remember that year. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they've got pictures now of uh, Alan Shepard's uh, golf ball, uh, and they've marked no. out. They've marked out on there how far they think uh, he hit his golf ball, wow. uh, which is actually kind of neat. You mean on the sound stage? You mean? Yeah, on the sound stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kubrick wanted to to get like the perfect arc. So uh, I understand that uh, they made uh, made Al uh, shoot it like six hundred times before he got exactly the the arc, you know, through the frame that he was looking for. Right. But I mean, they notoriously did not get along on set. <laughs> Kubrick and Shepard. Yeah. Well, I mean, Alan Shepard was a prima donna, having already faked orbiting the Earth. Uh, right. several times years earlier with, uh, for, for Peter Oselznik. I don't know. <laughs> Peter mm. Oselznik presents. Look at those pictures. That's just a piece of dust blown up a hundred times. <laughs> yep. That It says scale 20 meters, but that's a lie. It's scale 20 oh, yeah, millimeters. <laughs> it's, it's just neat. Uh, that's always a weird story. I guess the thing that I, they, they actually have a picture in that article too, I think of the actual, there you go, of the actual parts that he used uh, to I, make the I, golf club. I, I have to be honest with you. I don't think it was snuck. I think everyone at NASA was absolutely. I, I, I'm a golf ball truther, I guess. Golf um, ball truther. You know? Yeah. I think that NASA was fine with it. They thought it was probably a great idea, you know, and the NASA PR people probably went wacky. They were like, oh yeah, we're doing it, you know, cause they love that kind of attention. There's a there's a lot of stories uh, uh, from like the Apollo era, you know, where then spending when them spending uh, you know days and stuff in those capsules uh, of shenanigans that went on that may or may oh, not yeah. may or may not have been quite as truthful. But in a lot of cases, there's transcripts, and uh, it's they're, they're very funny to read. Yeah the, yeah, the marketing people really screwed that up, though. Imagine how much money you get to sell the rights to be the official golf ball of the moon landing. Oh yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's funny cause Hasselblad made hay from the cameras. For That's true. Decades. And, uh, Omega and the watches. Oh yeah, for sure. 
Uh, I don't know that Hasselblad and Omega would still exist without the fact, like, as a, I am a grown man and would absolutely wear an Omega Moonwatch. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Hasselblad, I think, is owned by DJI now. Uh, the actual brand? So, yeah. They're dumb, though. No, they, they, just, they, they bought the company completely. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. They're dumb, though. They just, like, make kind of okay cameras with, like, wood and stuff on them. Like, they're all super prestige that's not, tr but uh, I just correcting you is going to be difficult. All right. Uh, when <laughs> no. I look at the specs and on the also, Hasselblad, the modern Hasselblad digital cameras, they are relatively not special. Uh, okay. Sure. Maybe, maybe no, I'm. First of all, a camera is more than just the digital sensor. No, a camera is your lens. eye, man. Anyway, Omega is owned by Swatch now, too. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the new moon watches have plastic <laughs> pink bands. Hey, Swatch, you know, say what you will about Swatch. They, they, they're they incredible. They made know, some mad bank. Engineering. Uh, okay, so their current medium format uh, interchangeable lens camera mm -hmm. is, oh, you're right. It's only 50 megapixels. And they're, but it's like, got, uh, so it's probably got all like hand carved wood and shit on it. Well, no, it's not I mean, that one. It's a modern camera. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made out it's, of scrimshaw. <laughs> scrimshaw. Yeah. Now, this is a very modern camera because what yeah. they would do before is they would have a digital back on the back of their mm -hmm. 503 CW bodies. And then you could have their camera lenses that are just incredible. You know? For sure. This is really nice. Uh, I'm not going to buy one. They're very expensive. You seem like you'd be more happy with a Leica. <laughs> you need a range finder, Chris. <sighs> So I, I went through my Hasselblad phase. Of course you did. So I used to hand carry and and shoot with it with the kids. I've got boxes of Portra slide film uh, from the kids' early days. And honestly, the reality is once cell phone cameras and regular cameras yep. got good enough, I was I was never going to go back. So I sold off all my medium format gear. Yep. Um, you know, because I'm not a studio sh photographer. Right. Not so. Um, My best camera is the one that's f filming your this best right now. Camera is the one that you have on you. Right. So, you know, I've taken a ton of pictures with my with my cell phone cameras. So. There's there was definitely an inflection point, And I don't know exactly where it was, uh, where uh, for me personally, the the quality of the picture that I get out of my phone uh, just like negates carrying 10 pounds of camera and i don't know where it was it was somewhere around like a iphone 5 or 6 or something uh you know 2011 2012 somewhere in there it's like i, I don't want to carry around this heavy camera anymore there's it's not worth it except for yeah. i mean i still have it and i still use it if i'm going to take a nice portrait of somebody but uh, yeah i've been meaning to swap this brio here with the uh i have a sony mirrorless that's actually really good quality but I, you with know, a lot of those sony's world... you can just go straight out to usb too it's super easy yeah I, well i mean the other side of it is does the world really need me to be better focused better not really i mean look at me i'm i'm overexposed <laughs> look at me look at me yeah so i but right. i don't I'm, I'm only overexposed because everything outside of my window the whole pond is frozen so everything outside of my window is bright 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 white wow that's a Heck of a reflecting light. It's a lot. I've got, I'm bouncing light. <laughs> Bluetooth trackball. Yeah, the guy yes. printed this thing out. It's kind of like, do you know the Sphero? Uh, the oh, little sure. robot ball? It's kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm back here. It, yeah, so do I. Uh, the, it's kind of like that, but it's a trackball. Uh, you just roll it around on your desk. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. It's really cool. <laughs> well, the thing is, there's a lot of trackballs already out there i guess the only thing this is bluetooth no That's this isn't thing. this isn't you the red thing the orange part is just a stand you just put the ball on your I table and that. wheel it around that's no. fun no trackballs have been around yes you but trackballs historically balls. live inside of a little a little box and so the trackball stays in one spot on your desk that you roll around like a sphero you're doing. You're not understanding. Oh, it's, I see. You you take it out of its cradle and you roll yes, it around. The like orange thing is just a stand. Oh, okay. It's actually funny. That's, that's that sounds really stupid. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you, <laughs> but I also think that's a really fun idea. So all the electronics are inside. Yes. The 
It's just a. Okay. Does he ever take it out? Yeah, and, there's, and for a spin. Yeah, they video? show it. I don't see it. He doesn't do it. Did video? I see it elsewhere? Because it's just sitting there. See, he's still working. Yeah, but he doesn't roll it across the table. He should be, but that would like be like the boss. worst. That would be the worst ergonomics in the universe. Yeah, well, I don't. I mean, that's <laughs> the problem with trackballs. I don't even actually even really like mice. I like trackpads. Uh, so okay, I take. Good for that nerd. That's neat. That's right. There you go. That's not, the right response. That is not, the right response. Every day is Christmas. You don't need to build it. <laughs> that's right. Well done, sir. Uh, I salute your nerdity. I do too. The geeks from sp pretend space. <laughs> you consider yourself validated. So SN9. Validation. That's right. SN9 exploded on landing, but it was cool. I got to give them mad pop props. They got to 10 kilometers. Yep. They came on down and they were like 10, 20 feet from making it. And then I guess they're, they're what, they had a rocket. That one of the flight. engines didn't restart, so they couldn't straighten back out. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they it had was an impressive explosion. It was awesome. It was remarkable. The best part about it was that like we were all, I think you were all, you were both watching it live uh, in the channel. Yeah, we were all, and like, it's fun seeing something like this where you literally have no idea what's going to happen. And that okay. was an impressive explosion. Uh, and like the whole time you're watching this thing and it's coming down sideways and the announcers are like, that's fine. <laughs> Eventually it yeah. wasn't fine anymore. Well, you know, it, that could have gone gone better. It got more and more sideways and then you're like, oh yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I think this is too late, guys. Guys, the other problem, and you have this when whenever you do this with these amateur, because uh, we were watching what some amateur guys who were just like pointing cameras at the launch site. Uh, when you don't have the ground in the frame, like a shot like that, that thing could be three kilometers in the air or three hundred and fifty feet in the air. You can't tell because there's no. It. Wait for it. Wait, it's coming right here. Bam, and Whoa. that was oh, <laughs> that was cool. Well done. He, at least he missed the other rocket, right? Yeah, right. Good old SN10. Uh, SN. But like, yeah, it, it was exactly that shot you were showing where uh, like right before, like 10 seconds before the explosion, like I'm looking at this, like I have no idea if they are two kilometers above the ground or boom, <laughs> hit the ground, there's the explosion. <laughs> but uh, it was, that was, I really liked the video there too because you could see the fire coming out of there really yeah. nice. It's, well, it's funny. I was really surprised that the steam ejection ports, they're on the whole time. You know, the God, that's you know, cool. That is so hygienic. cool. That yeah, that, that swing it, right like there. That, <gasps> yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, they need one more rocket oh. to have enough to control it. You know, so Bam. that was it. Car sploosh. I love it. I've watched this from like a million angles. <laughs> that is a huge explosion. I wish yeah. there was some way for you to tell exactly, get a better reference of just how tall that explosion is. I yeah. mean, <laughs> well, I mean, the, this there's a rocket to right. its left. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> well, Scott Manley had a video uh, where they were showing uh, a, yeah. a temperature reading so you could see. So the white thing that's coming out of the bottom was all the liquid uh, oxygen. Let me find that, man. Uh, and uh, so there's like the video, you can see just this beautiful infrared mushroom cloud. And then out of the side, this solid black mass of liquid oxygen just blowing out everywhere. It was really cool. But he's Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly safe. The manliest man in the story. Yeah, just 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 go watch Scott Manley. He's right. He's, he's amazing. So you know, um, we're not gonna you know sit here and you know analyze Scott Manley analyzing. That's, that's right? a little too meta. It's me. a little too oh, meta. Sorry. Okay, so the last thing that we can talk about uh, since uh, none of us have watched the newest Wandavision, we're all now caught up, but we're all yeah, on last last Friday. Uh, holy fucking shit! That was awesome. It was uh, indeed. It, it, it did recover the the show for me, mm -hmm. and it was fine. It kind of. I, I have to tell you though. Uh, what's the dark haired gal's name? Um, Cat something. Dennings. Dennings. She is definitely a TV actor. You know. Oh, for it's sure. Like, yeah, it's like because I have to tell you, Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen, they're movie stars, right? For sure. I can see that. You yeah, know? but like. Yeah, they have a lot of TV actors <laughs> in that show. 
but yeah it kind of it reminded me of thor the first thor i'm like oh okay you know i don't know see i like the cat dennings uh i liked her character a lot uh in those thor movies i think that she's just charming and silly uh and you know she wears glasses uh you know which is always a plus which for me your thing yeah, yeah it's my jam uh it's, jam. it's my jam uh, but I mean, I just thought how they justified the first three episodes uh, and like tied them together into the bigger MCU. I just, yeah. I was so happy with the way that that all paid off. And, you know, they're still, they still got a bunch of cards uh, that they're holding close to the vest. So, uh, and that's why I had to not be on Twitter this morning because <laughs> yeah. something's well, happening. Let's be clear. Um, the, uh, when they threw trouble through the walls, mm -hmm. that would kill a mortal person, you know? Well, everybody, so she's cast that as Monica Rambeau. So everybody knows she's, right. knows she's Photon. Right. Uh, and, and uh, th there's not going to be like that surprise, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, I guess there would be for the regular audience. I, I guess the other possibility though, is because of the blast, they showed her when she crashed into the ground, she was all red and sparkly. Uh, and... I don't know the source of Photon's powers. My understanding is it's a dumb. So it's a Fantastic Four sort of thing where, oh, we get in space and got blasted with beams and now we got powers. Mm. I think it's kind of that level. Yeah. So she, she she ran the microwave out the door properly closed right. and became a right. mutant. She was listening to a podcast when she was flung through a dimensional barrier. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. They're, they're going to update it, you know. Yep. Yep. It's got to be modernized. Yeah. yeah. So, she, was, so yeah, she was experimenting I'm... with IPv6 during. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad they pretty much laid out what's going on finally. It was pretty much what we guessed was going on. Yep. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, I like it. I'm not sure how amazing it is if it if it is exactly what you think. You know what I mean? It's entertaining. But... Well, my understanding too is that it parallels House of M, but I haven't read House of M, so uh, I don't know how closely okay. that mirrors. Uh, so I don't know that it's a surprise to people. What's happening? It's it's a surprise to me. What I'm enjoying I, is that they are absolutely leaning in on the power of what TV can do in the and what they have built in the MCU. They're doing exactly what I want them to do with that. I guess I don't know. I mean, okay, you know, I think it's it, it's so far it's fine. You know, it's 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 worth the time spent, which is good. You know, I'm, I'm going to give it worth the time spent. Uh, sure. I'm going to give it uh, the best thing happening on TV right now. Uh, well, so you saw Resident Alien. How's that? Resident Alien is the second episode. OK, the first episode is all Alan Tudyk uh, and it's us trying to get to know Alan Tudyk's character. The second episode is way more. Let's meet the wacky neighbors. Uh, you know, like, uh, all the, it's, it's a lot of development of all the support cast and some of the support cast I don't care for. Uh, and like, some, they, they dwell too much, uh, like there's an, there's a very long, like musical montage that does that, that was really boring. Uh, in usually they wait till season three for that kind of crap. <laughs> uh, but like, I just, Good. they haven't quite got the tone nailed down. Well, have, have you read the comic book? Mm-mm. Or follow the story. Mm -hmm. So the show and the comic book are almost polar opposites. Really? Yeah. For <laughs> as for what a story about a alien pretending to be a doctor in a small town can be. Uh it was way more pro the, the, or... the, the comic book is more about it's kind of like an immigrant story. Hmm. You know, it's it's more he he isn't a bloodthirsty monster like he kind of is in this. And they, you know, he wants to kill one child in town in particular and murder other people. And they kind of play it off as a kind of a joke. And the, the original comic book is not like that at all. It's literally like an immigrant story and a detective story at the same time. It's oh, about him wait a second. These, these, okay, uh, so. Okay, so here's the Resident Alien covers. Yep. All right, now. Are you ready for this? Here's a comic book from the 80s. I don't know if Dark Horse ended up taking possession of it. So, Alien Encounters. They Resident both have Alien. the word alien, Chris. 
Oh my god! No, but it's there's Somebody... a lot of commonalities. I wonder if like this is like the spiritual ancestor of Resident Alien because uh, honestly, Alien Encounters was sort of like this uh, Tales from the Dark Side Twilight Zone kind of kind of comic book. It was really good. And there's an you eagle. Know? There's um, an eagle right outside my window. That's freedom. That's right, Marco. Uh, now, having said that, Resident Alien is okay. I uh, I love Alan Tudyk. Yeah, he, I love the little Law and Order um, <laughs> sort of bit. Yeah, <laughs> thumb bum. because yeah. he bum, learns bum. almost everything he knows about by human TV. society by TV. So when he is tasked to solve a mystery, he immediately thinks about Law and Order. Bum bum. I, I, I like everything about Alan Tudyk and I like everything about what Alan Tudyk is doing, looking for his spaceship and like building, like getting materials. I like all of that. Uh, I'm iffy on about half of the shenanigans that are occurring in town. Yeah. Uh, and I'm iffy about about half the cast. Mm. Uh, but I feel like this is one of those things where uh, it, it, in the olden days, in the long, long time ago, uh, before you would film 13 episodes and then air 13 episodes where you'd film an episode and then like maybe adapt, you know, within two, like two or three weeks because you're making your shows as you're airing them. Like, I feel like they would figure out what characters and what relationships work uh, and they would lean harder into those and lean away from some of the others. I enjoy everything that Alan Tudyk is doing with the little kid. I think that that's really, really funny. Uh, but uh, most of the rest of it. Mm. Yeah. It's it's very very sort of slapsticky and jokey, the whole thing is, and the comic book really isn't like that a whole lot. Is so the comic book kinda... dark? No, not really. Because that's my other struggle with this is that it really this is a show that really tries to spring from really dark, like the 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 final like some of the they they show bodies right, uh, really ruined oh. bodies. And, and he's here to kill all mankind. Yeah, I'm here to exterminate the human race. <laughs> he's here to exterminate the human race. He he is multiple times trying to kill that little boy. Yep. Uh, and the very first person he meets, he murders him and takes his likeness. Totally. And that's, that's the like thing. A pretty good show. It's it's well, but the it's weird because he is so tonally dark. Uh, and then like a lot of the shenanigans with the, that are happening in town are, they're almost like at the level of like an episode of Eureka. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like Eureka yeah. and Northern Exposure, uh, sort of combined. Uh, but then like he, he's taken over as the town doctor and like looks up on Google how to be a doctor for each patient and yeah. such. But he can do it because he's super smart. And look, it's filmed in Vancouver. I'm Big shock. Shocked. Big shock. Yeah. All right, folks. Uh, let's say our goodbyes. Go to Butter Days. Have our exciting, do our exciting work stuff. Thanks, Rob. See ya. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda. This has been Geeks in Space. Uh, I'm going to go watch WandaVision. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>